You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. to God, may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High, the Spirit of Wisdom, the Spirit of Wisdom, the Spirit of God Most High, may open your understanding so that you may understand perfectly well what is His will, good and will for your life through this program. May God bless you. But let me talk to you about what I was meditating in a few minutes ago. Thinking on thinking about Cain and Abel. You know that these two brothers, they are two kinds of people. They symbolize two kinds of people. One is the person that is evil, which is Cain. The other is the person of good, which is Abel. One represents the Antichrist, which is Cain. The other symbolizes the Lord Jesus, who is Abel. One is a living soul, which is the first Adam. The other is a life-giving spirit, which is the Lord Jesus, the second Adam. So, when we, when we define these positions, when we show, when we light up these thoughts like this, these two kinds of people, we cannot forget what the Lord Jesus said. Look at what Jesus said. Who is not with me is against me. And whoever is not with me scatters. Look how this scripture is so powerful. Here we see two kinds of people. A person who is in God's favor, who is with God, and those who are not with Jesus. People who put together and those who scatters, those who scatters. So, this we find all over. We find this in your house, in your home, at work, in schools. Doesn't matter if you are of church A, B, or C. If you are from a religion A, B, or C, if you cheer for a team, doesn't matter. You are among, you are among between those that are with Jesus, you are on Jesus' side, or you are against Jesus. Side. Whether you like this message or not, whether the person believes in this or not, they are, pay attention, they are one kind of Cain or one kind of the Antichrist, they are a kind of the Lord Jesus. What is your type? Please, evaluate yourself. Evaluate your heart. The Bible, the Bible, the Lord Jesus himself, he said, or made a, 
made, made a, a calling to those who observe or gossips the, the others sin while they themselves do not see their own speck in their own eyes. And many people, they evaluate other people's business, other people's lives, and don't evaluate themselves. And I'll share with you this experience. That it, it may help you. It may help some of you or many of you. Or even if it's one person, it is worth sharing. Since, since I had my encounter with God, that I received the Most High, that my life was transformed as from water to wine, I do not forget that day, it was that night, because in those moments I, I had my entire soul washed, it was washed, soaked. First of, of tears of sadness, for I saw my sin. And second, because the Holy Spirit pointed to me that He could save. So I was soaked from the top of my head to the sole of my feet because I had found salvation. And since that day that I received the Holy Spirit, I never, I never paid attention to other people's lives. I didn't care if the pastor was a sinner or not. I didn't want to know if the brother was a sinner or not. I did not want to know about no one's life because I was taking care of my own life. Because I know and I learned that everybody has their faults and mistakes. All of us, we have our faults and mistakes. If we do not make a fault with words, if we don't do it with words, with the mind, if we don't make a fault with our mind, it's with our eyes, if it's not with the eyes, it's with the hands, but we are always making mistakes in one way or the other because we are humans. So, from that day on that I had an encounter with God and I received His Spirit, I stopped looking to other people's lives and I only began to take care of my own faith, the faith that He had given me. So, I was cautious in my actions. I wasn't perfect, and I'm not perfect. Even though I received the Holy Spirit, you know, I, I was not a perfect person. Because perfection, we only have when our body will be made glorious after our, our way from here, from earth to heaven, when we pass on to eternity, that then the Lord Jesus will glorify our body. We are going to get or receive a new body that has no sins. So all those who die with Jesus receives this perfect body, receives this perfect body, a body that is glorified, but the point I want to stress or to make here is that I was not criticizing A, B, or C. Why not? Because the Holy Spirit, He occupied in making me thinking about what He wanted, in seeing now how He saw how his son, the Lord Jesus, saw. So now, inside of me was born a passion, a passion for those who are in the world and never received this, this opportunity to turn from their sins. So then, since then, we have made an oath, Lord, here is my life. 
I do not want to live in this world no more, and I want you to live in me. And this is the spirit. This is the spirit of a, a Christian. The spirit of the Lord Jesus is the spirit that is searching to help others and not criticize and not see the mistakes. And this was the character of our Lord Jesus, which is a character of love, of a true love. When we talk about, when God talks there about the first great commandment, love your, the Lord your God, above all things, above above all things, with all your strength, with all your, with all your mind, with all your soul. So to love God is to love and to do and to be in order to be with people that are suffering and do the best for them. Paul once said, what I received from the Lord is what I also pass on to you. So when the person has the Holy Spirit, the first thing they want to do is to share, is to transmit, to give what they have received to others. And then the Universal Church came about, about 11 years later from that day. So, my dear listener, whether we want or not, whether we believe or not, whether we follow it or not, each one of us, each one of us, we are a type of Cain or a type of Abel. And what we, we speak, what we say, Jesus said that the mouth, the mouth speaks what's filled within the heart. So you hear from me, from my lips, what is, what is filled of, what my soul is filled of. So these words Jesus said, my words proves who I am, shows who I am. You say that I am the son of the devil, but my works, my thoughts, my, my words, they are testifying on my behalf. And the same is with you. Your words, your actions, your behavior testifies about you. I do not need to defend myself. These people that, you know, talk bad about me, that criticizes me, that say this or that, that even invent things ab about me, I'm not going to be worried about them. What should I expect from people that have a character that is like Cain's? What should I expect from people that have the character of the Antichrist? The same goes with you. If you are of God, you are not concerned with those that only want to do evil against you. If you can help them, if they ask for help, you will help. Jesus says that we should forgive as many times the person makes a mistake because we are forgiven by God all the time. But it doesn't mean that I need to respond that I need to defend. I don't need to defend and please do not you by no means defend me. When they talk and say that I am this, I am that, I am a robber, thief, let them speak. When they speak bad about the universal church of the kingdom of God, let them talk. When they speak bad about God, let them talk about God. And let me ask you, does God need somebody to defend him? Of course, the gods of this world, the gods of this world, the gods who are adored in this world by the children of Cain, by the Antichrist, yes, these, they defend their God to the core. But our God needs no defense, right? Our God, he doesn't need to be defended because he's the Almighty. I remember a case of Gideon, actually Gideon's father. You know that when Gideon destroyed the altar of Baal that his father had, 
So then the people got together and wanted to kill Gideon, saying, oh, it was Gideon, your son who did it. So then Gideon's father said, wait, 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 hold on. Let us think. If Baal is God, Baal will defend himself and will punish Gideon. But if Baal is nothing, nothing is going to happen. Let us leave Baal to defend himself. <laughs> this is very strong. Huh? So let those who are of Baal, those who are of Baal, throw stones and criticize. Let them be. Let them be. Because they are only presenting the offering that Cain presented. So, therefore, they are Cain's children. They are against the Lord Jesus. As he said, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. So, these are two kinds of people. And we know that they are not in favor of faith. We know this. So we cannot defend the Lord Jesus, defend bishop, defend the church. I've, I've always got hit in my life. I've always been, I was always misunderstood. Many who would re who would hit or throw stones or wanted to kill me, they are actually in the church today. They are now helping helping others. And thank God for that. Imagine if I had the power to kill them or if I would curse them. They would not be here today. They would not be helping me today. So I have authority to curse the children of Cain, but I'm not going to do that because they are already under curse. They have no family, no wife, no husband, are frustrated in their lives and dreams. And it's natural that these people, they show envy. They manifest envious and even say, no, bishop, he exploit the people, he goes after the people, and I tell you, okay, I am exploiting people through faith, but I ask you, are you a perfect person that you are not exploiting people when you sell, when you sell things above price, above average, or you fool people in your business? Aren't you like that? Or you are all righteous? Huh? Are you a holy person that do not explore or do not exploit anybody? Because you are honest? Of course not. Right? So, I want to tell you this. You who are of faith, you who are a true Christian, not an antichrist. The apostle says, apostle Peter says that there are many antichrists inside of the church. And I know of that. I am, I, I am aware of it. And what can we do about it? Are we going to be now hunting the antichrist and killing them? No. We are going to preach, we are going to speak what Jesus told us to talk, to preach salvation, to preach love, to preach forgiveness. For example, I ask you, who is of God? Who has the Holy Spirit? Is not capable to forgive? What? Of course they are able to forgive. They are capable to forgive. They have conditions to forgive. Whoever is of God forgives because God is forgiveness. God, whoever is of God loves because God is love. Because whoever is of God is not of hate, of anger, does not desire evil from their fellow. They want to help because that's the spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord Jesus. So, my dear listener, 
Maybe you are a person who is sincere, but you, you still you are still not born of God. You are not born of God. You are not born of God, and you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit because you have not surrendered yourself 100%. And it's your own fault. It's not the church's fault, the past. The, the, the fault is completely yours. If I receive the Holy Spirit, it's not because I deserve it, no. But it's because I surrendered my life. I gave up my life. I say that I was one year inside of the church accepting Jesus, accepting Jesus. And one day, finally, I gave my life. But for one year, I was only accepting Jesus inside of the church. But it was when I left the church, I would take or bring the whole, I would bring my will back because I didn't want to let go of my purposes and ideas until one day I made a decision. I said, no, I'm going to do it 100%. And then when I did that, the Holy Spirit came. And that's the reality. So if you did not receive the Holy Spirit, if you were not yet baptized with the Holy Spirit, if you don't live a life of forgiveness, if you don't live a life that is righteous, is simply because you are living a, a life, a kind of life like Cain. And Cain, he was cursed. So the person, for instance, lives a life that is unfortunate, and I would say better, a disgraced life, I'm sorry for the term, they believe in God, but their life is a full disgrace. Why? Because they did not surrender to the Lord of life, to the owner of life. The one who gave life was God. But the life he has for you is only for those who want. Are only for the ones who surrender. Are not only for the ones who, who say they believe. No, you need to give. If you don't give the seed to the, to the ground, the ground will not return you the favor. If you do not work, you don't gain. So you need to work to gain. You need to work to gain. So, you need to work. You need to give of your time in a job. You need to spend the time in certain, certain hours in work because you need to get the money. You want to get married, but you don't want to give your life 100% in marriage. You can't give that up. You have to give. You need to give it up so that then you may receive from them what you want, which is marriage, so that you can be married. This is clear. How can you want to eat the, an omelette, for instance, without breaking the eggs? There is no way, right? You need to break the eggs. You need to give it up. And this, my friends, is what Cain did. Cain Cain gave, but have you been giving good? Because Cain gave what was evil and God did not accept. God did not accept a worthless offering. Actually, God did not even ask. You have free will to give, but you want to give something. You need to give the best, because if I am the Lord, then I urge you. I urge from you to be given the best from you. So do not give worthless things. So a person receives from God what they have been given to him. And I'm not talking about the financial offering, no. Because to give an offering on the altar is the minimum that you can do. It's like I spoke this yesterday. The person gives everything. Give the house, the car. Oh, you can't complain. You have a beautiful house to live in. You have cars available for you. You, you eat wherever you want. You travel the world. You buy the dresses you want. 
I give you everything, I give you the credit card, your own credit card. But one thing you cannot urge from me, that I am yours. <laughs> Do you want this kind of husband? Because they are, they are those who like, I don't know what's the, the word, but they are, they are people who, you know, they are people who don't care if they're going to have other women. I just want to have life. So, there are people that they do, they do not care to surrender their lives halfway and receive also halfway, but who truly wants the plenitude of life, the spirit of the Most High, they must give all their life. They must give all of themselves, even if their life is worthless. But God wants the, you the way you are. And I would like to make a, an invitation for you who are thinking to kill yourself. You have, you have been having these thoughts because you are under depression. So, do you want to kill yourself? Do me a favor. If you are going to end your life, if you are thinking to kill and take your life away, why don't you try giving it to God instead? Is it hard to do it? No. He is there where you, where you are right now. And He accepts you the way you are. You may be dirty, depressed, you can be poor, you can be hungry, you can be a fat person, or you can be ugly, beautiful, doesn't matter who you are, the way you are, the way you are, the way you are the, you, your bad character, Oh, your evil way, he accepts you the way you are. Your life is a trash, you may say. He accepts you as a trash. And then, when you surrender your life, then he will fix you up. This is very powerful. And this is what takes place with people that you're going to hear now. These testimonies you're going to hear is, is like that. My life was like this. My life was sad. I was up, upside down. I didn't want to live until one day I surrendered myself. I surrendered this trashy life that I was, and God made me a new person. I gave this body that was in suffering, I gave it up, and He, he made me a new creature. Let us listen to these testimonies right now in regards to what God has done in their lives. I was adopted. And I didn't understand my adoptive parents. I didn't understand where they were coming from. You know, I wanted to know who my real mom is and what she did and who she was. And my parents always told me that she wasn't a good person. You don't need to be around her. So I started to rebel. I was um, hanging out in the streets, hanging out with wrong friends, you know, smoking. I found my real mom and I ended up living with her. And to find out it wasn't the way I needed to be. And it was other, there was other times where she did pull me into certain other lifestyle with drug dealers and stuff like that. Three years ago, she had introduced me to this guy and said, you know, if you need your phone bill paid, if you need, you want a real man, this is a man that could take care of you. He was no good. She only did that for him to be around so she can get her crack. And one time, one of her friends ratted her out and one night, I just came home from work and I come in the house and I just changed my clothes and there's a whole bunch of police in the house. So everybody had to go to jail. I just started to break down and cry. I was like, why, why did I do this to myself? Why, why did I get myself in this place? Why did I have to go so hard to go nowhere, you know? I couldn't change the situation because that person didn't want it to change. It was, it was devastating. So I read the paper and it was like, do you feel like you have bad luck, depression, bad spirits? And I was like, wow. Okay, maybe I'll go on a Friday to the church. I don't like how my life is going. I feel very depressed. So I'll give it a try. I, I definitely saw the change in me. And I saw where I was 
and where I couldn't be. You don't, you don't have to choose the negative life. You don't have to choose smoking. You don't have to party. You don't have to do it to feel good, to feel happy, to think that you're gonna overcome your depression, your anxiety, whatever you go through. That's not the way. Walking through the doors of University Church gave me a way to build my faith. You know, use what God gave us to use, you know? There is a God out there. There's a God and he's loving, he's caring, and he's here to change your life, help you be the person that you are designed and to be. I was a complete wreck. It was total despair. My mom's the alcoholic and my dad was the screwed up one. But my mom, she was an alcoholic. It was kind of twisted though, because when she was drinking, she'd call me names. Oh, you're just like your father. But on the other hand, she said, oh, you're, you're such a great guy. You're destined for great things. It was really confusing. I had a serious rage issue, which my dad had too. My first wife, there was a time that we got in an argument and I just lost it. And I think that was the beginning of the end of our, my first relationship. So I don't want to be with you. I, I, you know, I want to get a separation. Let's, let's split up. Ultimately, I lost my job. It was a mess. It just everything went wrong. I was so depressed I couldn't keep a job. So I decided I'll go to GR. I got welfare actually. Get some food stamps. Get the couple hundred bucks a month, whatever, to keep me satisfied. And I had just met the most beautiful person that I could ever meet. 
We started out as friends and it grew into a relationship. And we broke up because of my behavior. During that time, she was watching the TV program and she saw something on there that, that piqued her interest. And so I went to that initial meeting. That's when my life completely changed. So it was just no nonsense, real, honest truth. And I can't even explain it. It was just, it was results based. It was practical. It was like, whoa. It was just shocking almost. It was like, man, this is awesome. After I left, I was, like, you know, lighter, feeling like I could conquer the world with my eyes open. And I started to learn what real faith was. It's making up your mind about what you want and not letting anything get in your way. You determine something by faith, you know, knowing God is with you behind that. God saved me, not just saved me like, oh, he saved my soul. He saved me out of the pit. And in my own, just my own opinion, my own, the way I think is I owe God my life. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. Daisy Johnson. I faced a lot of difficulties. There was a lot of witchcraft being thrown at me. So 
for no apparent reason. I don't know why. Um, I worked around a lot of evil people and a lot of that evil thoughts and things got on me. And, and I had come to a point where I, I lost hope. I thought God had forsaken me. And it was like everywhere they was attacking me, attacking me. I was having problems financially. I was having problems um, paying my bills. I was homeless. That was the worstest thing. It, it was the worstest thing that a person can experience because I didn't have nowhere to turn, no who to go to or what. It's horrible not to have a roof over your head, not to have food to eat. I was having a problem uh, with myself because I thought maybe I had did something and God had forsaken me. But then come to realize that it wasn't me, it was what was being thrown at me. The spirit kept saying, oh, why don't you kill yourself? Or oh, don't nobody want you, God don't love you. It was just so horrible, horrible. My family turned against me. When I got around them, it was like they didn't want to stay in the same room with me. If I went to a family reunion or a cookout or what have you, I would go in in one room. If, if I go in to mingle with them, if I could be in the living room, I would go in the living room to mingle. They would go in the kitchen. So I come out the, out the living room into the kitchen, they go back into the living room. I found out about the church by watching TV. And that morning, the pastor saying, come. And the number up there saying, if you need help, you know, you need counseling or you need prayer, you know, write the number down and call. And I call. I've been in the church for three months now. I did the chain of prayer for every day for two months. And that really helped me. That opened my eyes up. I have my own place. And I get my retirement. Today, um, I'm no longer homeless. I'm communicating better with my family. And today, no more problems. Nothing else can bother me because I know who God is now. I know. I feel good. I haven't felt like this in a long time. <laughs> I really is like, it's, it's an honor. It really is an honor.
has gone without a trace And you've tried to find your place But found his grace The illusions turn to stones And tears appear to fall There's still one thing left to do It all depends on you He can turn the old and make it new It all depends on you Take a look at what you're going through But still he cares for you Surrender all to him And you will see Whoa sun back to your sky and still he'll care for you all you have to 